Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at something I was playing around with a little bit earlier in Command, and that is the phases of the moon having an impact on visibility. Now when I originally sat down to do this, I was reading a nice little um, article basically about how difficult it can be to spot targets at night, especially if you're dealing with ships that are moving slowly. So I said, well what happens if we try that out with vehicles? So what I did is I did a little bit of research and I found myself a nice little calendar which will actually go ahead and calculate the phase of the moon for me. And I said, well let's go ahead and load it up in Premiere, and uh, not Premiere, and not uh, Command and see what happens. So I've got ourselves a so right now, this is February 16th. This is a completely full moon. I actually have a PT-76 here. It's got no special night vision or anything. And of course, I have another PT-76 here that's going to go shooty-shoot. So let's go ahead and uh, unpause and uh, see what happens here. So our PT-76 is off. Remember, we're dealing with a complete full moon here. It's going to be relatively bright, especially if we're dealing with aircraft. So he's cruising, he's cruising, he's cruising. No problems, nothing to report, nothing to report. Oops, slowing down, must be getting to some thick jungle or something like that. You know, New Jersey can be a pretty sketchy place. Cruising along here, cruising along, cru oh, and we spotted him. Let's see here. So at a maximum, maximum, maximum full moon, uh, we detected him at a distance of 0 0.2 nautical miles away. Now that's eh, that's about reasonable. I mean, if you see him fire or something like that, it'd probably be a little bit clearer. So let's go ahead and uh, load up the scenario thing and switch to a new moon, which would be completely blacked out here. So um, let's go ahead and reset everything actually before I do all that. Yes, I name all my missions the same thing, <laughs> except for the ones I got to save for later on. So I'm going to come down here. I'll go ahead and, like I said, change the phase of the moon here. Grab my scenario time. So we've got 222. We'll switch this to 01. Like I said, that's going to be a pure new moon. And theoretically, in the real world, it should be a lot more difficult to spot the other unit. So let's go ahead and uh, unpause, and I'll let him go choo-choo in the general direction. So he goes ripping along. Uh, PT-76, by the way, are pretty slick. They're amphibious tanks, and they're gigantic. Cruising, cruising, still cruising. Getting close. Remember, we're slowing down for the uh, woods here. Getting really close. Come on, wait for it. Come on, anytime. Oh, pause. Let's see here. Point two. So now in this particular case, uh, you can see that even though uh, we have different moon phases, it did not impact whatsoever the spotting distance of these two units. Now I immediately said, well, uh, what happens if you're dealing with ships? All right, we've gone ahead and set this up pretty straightforward. We have an OSA on both sides. The reason I chose the OSA instead of a lot of other different types of ships is because they just have eyeballs. Uh, there's no light, low light television techniques or anything like that. It's just old fashioned. The other thing I like about the OSA is they're quick. So this experiment shouldn't take very long to determine. Right now we are at a maximum full moon. Ooh. <laughs> and that hurt. Let's see here, we were detected at about the same distance, believe it or not, as we did the ground units. So let's go ahead and now reset everything one more time. We've got an intro scenario, I'll zoom in a little bit. Let's go ahead and change the time and the phase of the moon one more time. I'll go to 01 here, press copy, press OK. Now we're at a new moon, so theoretically they should be very difficult to see each other. But again, that was at 0 0.2. All right, let's do it to it. So this thing starts accelerating. I'm making its way in that general direction. So far, nothing. So far, nothing. Remember last time this happened pretty quickly, so I'm going to have to unpause. Right there. Go down to 50 now, and the target has been spotted. Interesting. So in this case, we actually detected the target significantly further out. Now, I believe on my last experiment, I accelerated time a little bit too greatly, and I wasn't able to identify exactly. So in this case, I'm still not trusting my results here. And again, you should always recheck things, especially when you can. So let's go back to the full moon again, because that was 1.9 nautical miles they detected each other. So let's go ahead and get out of high speed here. Yeah, same distance. Interesting. Um, I wonder if this also applies to aircraft. Alrighty then, uh, we have ourselves a pair of MiG-21 MFs. These are the Fishbed Js. Pretty old school, no special sensor technology on board at all. Uh, thankfully for us though, um, they're basically going to run into each other head first in just a moment. We're currently at Mac- Oh! <laughs> Look at that. Um, wow, that was at 2.8 nautical miles we picked each other up, which is interesting. Again, this is at full moon at this time. So we'll go ahead and reset everything one more time, and we'll go ahead and whack it with the new moon and uh, see what happens this time. So we'll go swing back to the first, copy the information, press OK, and let's see what happens this time. Coming, 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 let's see what happens. They're getting close. Remember, they're basically on top of each other, so i got to slow down time a little bit closer this time. There we go, 5x. That way we'll be able to have a really good look at it. Ready? <laughs> and point three. So basically, actually, that is significantly closer. Although, like I said, I think the last experiment was actually improper as well. Let's set that back up one more time. All right, let's see what happens. And again, maybe I just misread. This is back to full mood again. Getting close, getting close. Like I said, they're basically going to run into each other in the air here. All right, radar is great. Again, this is full moon, full moon. 
Interesting. So that shows, uh, I don't know if this is supposed to be like this or not, but um, I would say from my quick little experiment here that the phase of the moon has no impact on visual spotting. Now, I find that really, really interesting. You know, again, this will be the extension of this real quick. I'm going to go ahead and load this scenario up one more time. But this time, we're going to change the time of day. So uh, right now, it's uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. Actually, it's much, much earlier than that. It's at uh, 2200. That's the uh, middle of the night here. So if I set things to, let's say, 1330, I'm going to go ahead and copy that real quick. That should get me 830 in the morning, which uh, this time of year, that's pretty bright. Let's go back a couple hours here. Let's go back to 1130. Copy it. There we go, 6.30 in the morning. So it's not too dark, but it's still pretty darn dark. Uh, let's see what happens this time. Because like I said, now, now I'm on to something, and I'm kind of curious. I'm just kind of curious. Oh, pause. Yes, massive difference in visual detection range. All right, so I can say from this experiment that the phase of the moon doesn't seem to have any impact on the visual detection range. Now, the reason I was inspired to do this is because over in DCS, you can, you know, change the time of year and things like that. And I've got to say, during a full moon, when your eyes are adjusted to the darkness, you'd be really surprised how far you can see. But it also goes to show you how important things like night vision and, you know, radar are. Other than that, enjoy.